I've been excited to do this video for a while. Knives Out is one of my favourite films and Steve Yedlin is one of the most talented cinematographers working today, not only on the narrative storytelling side but also the colour science technical side. Anyway, in today's video I'll be covering the equipment Yedlin used, how he achieved some of the unique lighting setups, as well as what he and Rian Johnson did to craft the timeless look. Now, before we start talking about the equipment, we need to establish who Steve Yedlin is, because it might explain a few things. So if we navigate to Steve Yedlin's website, he has two sections, one for cinematography and one for colour science, which is basically all about how we can get so incredibly close to emulating film stock, and that sometimes it isn't even necessary to shoot on film. Now, this needs a whole video for itself, and I'm still researching it whenever I have the free time, but I just thought it was important to note before we got any further. So, even though Yedlin used the Alexa 65 and a Panavision PSR R200, the main camera used to photograph the film was in fact an Alexa Mini, which sounds a bit peculiar for this budget level, but do you really need anything more? I chose the Alexa Mini for its excellent colorimetric reliability, low noise, sensor size that could be covered by the lenses I wanted to use, and its ability to go up to 200 frames per second without having to change our framing area. As for the lenses, Yedlin went with the Panavision Primos, Panavision PCZ and PZWs, which are just their compact zooms, and the Zeiss Master Primes, stating about the primes, you can open these lenses wide and the image doesn't fall apart, and that seems like a pretty good reason to use them. But as for the compact zooms, these were apparently vital to Rian Johnson's visual design, and they played a huge part in how the overall film looks. Okay. So who the fuck is that? Um, this is Benoit Blanc. When I first saw the old dark mansion during an early scout, I was struck by the beautiful, natural light coming through the windows, and knew that by subtly augmenting that window light during production, we could capture that steely but magical feel. So to start by talking about the general lighting style, let's have a look through this broad range of stills, which is one of the things I do to reference after watching a film. Anyway, we can see that there is a lot of soft lighting, usually in the interview shots, or just when they are having casual conversations. Now that isn't to say that there isn't a ton of hard light, because there is, especially when the lighting feels a bit more natural. The characters are lit by the sun or lamps for example, or at least they seem to be. Now instead of just counting the shots to see if they are warm or cool, I just used a tool on shot deck to tell me, and I know it isn't a 100% accurate, but it's the best there is. And warm seems to be quite dominant, by around 100% actually. And thinking about it, it kind of just makes sense. A lot of the film is inside, lit by seemingly tungsten bulbs or tungsten coloured lights. And the story sort of calls for it. Sure, this is a film about a murder, but the environment is weirdly warming. Now, this could just be me, but the winter thick sweaters, grand rooms are just quite inviting. Back to the physical lighting aspect though, Yedlin used a combination of Ari's sky panels and custom built RGBWWs that would allow him to blend colour to match the custom fixtures, or at least that's my understanding of it. He would then use Dupron foam sheets as diffusion, which again, from my understanding, acts like most other diffusion, but is solid as opposed to a fabric. Even if the light outside changed, we could always match our fill lights to it, giving a gentle look in which the wrapped light matched the environment, instead of looking like artificial augmentation. Now, one of the famous images floating around the internet before the release of the film was this, where Yedlin had replicated a window reflection in Jamie Lee Curtis's glasses. And I'm sure he did this multiple times, as we know he did it on Craig too, but it's just too good of a technique to only use a couple of times. It not only adds another element of depth to the image and makes it all a bit more realistic and interesting to watch, but it also allows Yedlin to light the scene how he would want to, without compromise. Very nice. Matter of fact, oh my God. eat shit. No, no. What? How's that? No. Fact. Do not use that word in front of my son. Eat shit. Eat shit. You eat shit. I will slap that smug smile. Definitely eat shit. 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 With the reading's approach, it's nothing but a joy. We found some really cool shots and did fun stuff like breaking the convention of the tighter camera having closer eye lines and the wider having the looser ones. Now I think the best way to describe the look of Knives Out is timeless. This is a film that feels like it really won't age, and as a comparison, 
films like Batman vs Superman and Iron Man, which I get are very different films, but the orange and teal look will age them, and that's not to discredit the cinematographers as they made the films look good, but we will look back in 20 years and be able to tell that these films are from that time period. And that's why I think it's important to point out that Yedlin didn't go this route, as easy as it may have been, however I'll touch more on the grading aspect later. So this film has a very vintage setting. The huge manor house, older oak furniture, different lamps scattered around the place, huge windows, high ceilings, all adds to this almost heritage look, and we could even go as far as to say that the house is playing a character, but that's too much for a cinematography analysis. I think the point that I'm trying to get at is that this is a timeless look. Everything that I've covered so far has added to it, the naturalistic lighting take, authentic grade, it all just makes you feel comfortable, and I feel like I'm rambling here but I really can't find another way to put it. Onto the compositions though, throughout it's very purposeful, and the obvious place to start is the interviews. The characters are slightly off centre, we are usually looking up at them, there's almost this sense of power around all of them, and it's still a mystery as to who could have done this, or at least for now. But then there's this strange sense of power when Ransom enters, we are almost constantly looking up at him. He's in the centre of the frame, and he just evokes an aura of nonchalance, which can't really be said for any other characters, well, any other than Benoit Blanc. One thing Rian and I did discuss in our brief references phase of Knives Out was the Robert Altman style of weaving characters together in a space with a fluid, evolving camera that combines dolly moves, zooms, and pans. This was a basic guiding principle for us. As for the grading, from my perspective, it seems like a simple enough process, and I don't mean simple in the way that it was throwing a lot on and being done with it, I mean it's more in the way that there doesn't seem to be a really definitive look. Yedlin didn't go Matrix on this, or even Seven. It looks true to life, there's nothing really of note about it, but it's incredibly well done. Now, as I established earlier, Yedlin is pretty much a genius when it comes to replicating film stock. I've gotten super deep into studying colour science and I develop my own image processing algorithms for both colour and spatial rendition. And it's pretty obvious that he used those techniques here. There are scenes in this film where it would be almost impossible to tell the difference to if it were shot on film. I mean, the halation, grain, skin rendition, it just makes it indistinguishable to 35mm. Now, I'm not going to go any further today because I simply haven't looked as much into his process where I feel comfortable talking about it properly, but I'm still reading up about it whenever I have free time, and if you would like to see a video on it when I'm ready, just let me know below. Shit. So overall, in creating the timeless look for Knives Out, Yedlin utilised naturalistic and authentic feeling lighting thought carefully about how to compose his characters in order to evoke a feeling of mystery, and crafted a colour grade that would have you doubting yourself on whether it was shot on film. I truly can't wait to see what he does with Knives Out 2. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, not if you did, if you have a recommendation for an analysis leave it down below, thanks so much for watching and maybe I'll see you next time, bye!